Welcome to the Nerdstalker Tech Week podcast here. I am Adolfo Ferranda. This is episode 49 here uh, at Nerdstalker at A Ferranda on Twitter with my co-host here. Hey, this is Greg Blurry, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter. Uh, hey, how's it going, man? Great good. week, huh? Yeah, yeah. Good to yeah. see you, man. It's been, it's been too long, man. Hey, good luck to Japan today at WBC, but I heard they're losing, so oh well. Hopefully this works. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they will have come around by the time everyone sees us, right? It'll be old news. World Baseball Classic, baby. Everyone's hung up. Okay. Uh, hangover will be done. <laughs> we'll, but I'm drinking water. We'll be done. We're recording yes, on uh, yes. St. Patty's Day here. That's why I mentioned this. Oh, early. that's right. It is St. Patty's Day. Hey, hey uh, happy St. Patty's to all of my Irish friends out there. Yeah, so, yeah. what what is this uh, thing I see of the rise and fall of the personal car? Yeah, yeah. So, a fascinating article uh, in the Atlantic that I stumbled upon. Um, and so, yeah, what, oh, nice. what the author is saying is that uh, we're closer to the end of the car than uh, the beginning is is sort of like the way all this technology ebbs and flows and um, uh, even large technology like the automobile, for instance, right? Um, all of these things, okay. all of these type of big uh, seemingly technologies that we would, we would think could never leave our lives uh, have, a, have an actual beginning and end and that mm-hmm. we are closer to the end than the beginning. He's not, uh, uh, they're not alluding that this is, you know, the end is eminent or anything, but it's definitely in transition right now. Um, it's sort of what's happening to the landline, if you want a good example of, of uh, it in action right now. Um, so most landlines, as most people know, are kind of being end of life. When you move into a new home, you typically don't even bother calling the, you know, Ma Bell anymore or anything like that. You call uh, no one really except pg or your power provider or whatever it is, right? Yeah, right. Um, so, so what is he saying? Uh, the... You know, the assertion is cars will still exist on the uh, periphery, much like uh, the occasional canal boat, um, uh, but we'll move on, right? So um, the primary mode of transportation in the past were, you know, canal boats, uh, steamboats, mm. uh, whatever, horse and buggy, whatever <laughs> analogy you want to use, you know? And, horse. And so <laughs> Even you can, horse. <laughs> you can see these sort of these actual examples here in in reality here and again the landline being sort of a similar type of thing and the term for this type of uh movement or whatever lifespan is called a socio-technical transition um Hmm. so so you have to think uh you know when people think of the automobile end of life the, the automobile is not the central element there's other things to the automobile as well like highways upkeep of highways um registering people for you know that system, insuring people system, training people to learn how to drive and testing them. And, and there's just a whole huge infrastructure to the whole thing, right? And and all of that also to keep in mind. Um, in fact, uh, some of the statistics show that auto uh, registrations have plateaued, even though the population is has grown. So a very interesting wow. type of trend there that we're seeing. Um and the assertion is that there's going to be other upstarts um, that that are going to sort of uh, flip, you know, because there is going to be something that will replace the automobile in whatever form that may be. Um, they call this type of thing hmm. in technology movements insurgent niches. Uh, in this particular example, we would look at something like an Uber or a Scoot Networks or perhaps some mode of other trans- public transportation. Maybe, or even uh, Segways. <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lift, et cetera, right? Yeah, uh, and, I see. And they're, assert- they're, uh, they're pointing towards China as possibly being the answer this time, whereas America was, you know, we had this, in the past, we had this big expanding, expand, expandant uh, country and, you know, lots of space that we had to cover with the automobile uh, to get from town to town. Uh, not mm. so much the case anymore. Uh, cities are getting denser. New technologies are actually coming out of China as well. Um, the I funny see. thing was uh, a really interesting example is that uh, although cars were invented in America, uh, you know, when you think of Henry Ford, that type of that type of uh, combustion engine thing, um, it was sort of sh- shoved into different countries. So um, the automobile never really fit all too well within Europe's um, very crowded towns and cities, right? It was, it still is kind of a, you go through these single lane cobblestone streets and here comes some vehicle or something and it's, it's quite strange, right? And it, well, it's it, really it, smart car size type place, right? 
Yeah, yeah, but it was uh, the thing was it was this you know big automobile American creation that was just sort of shoved. It was this you know needed technology that that sort of shoved upon every other country. Although every other country mm-hmm. is you know not not quite a square, right? It's a, it could potentially right. be a circle or something like that, right? And and mm-hmm. and so that being said, uh, if this technology could come possibly from China, whatever's going to place the automobile, it may not be uh, the perfect fit for the for America, right? Um, right. But we still may have to adopt it, right? So it might be that type of example as well. So a fascinating uh, article by The Atlantic and um, a, a nice, a really nice thought piece on uh, sort of the, the ebb and flow of technologies and their lifespans. Yeah, I, I like that. I, I think uh, it could be right. I mean, I know here in San Francisco, now it's an urban landscape, of course, that uh, Lyft and Uber have, have taken over mm-hmm. a lot of places. I know that you, you used uh, Lyft a lot um, and yeah. You know, basically yeah. surplanting the taxi service here, right in San Francisco, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's a big so. trend towards um, younger people not uh, wanting to even, you know, owning. I wouldn't say wanting to own a vehicle, but it's not their highest priority anymore. Uh, one of the examples in the article is that you you would never see a movie like American Graffiti created again in this modern era, uh, where it celebrated the large automobiles and racing down the streets against each other in the, in that sense. Although there is Fast and Furious, so <laughs> it could be that. <laughs> well, but it's it's the iPad and the uh, lap uh, the Apple laptop, right? The MacBook that's uh, more coveted by by a lot of the young adults here today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But anyways. So, so, Greg, Japan. Speaking of Japan hey, hat, <laughs> I had to I had to include that. So, uh, what's going you on? Know, thanks to uh, my uh, Twitter friend uh, Kevin Minot and uh, Ryu Spake of the week for this. Uh, so, on Tuesday this week, uh, Japan became the first country to ever successfully extract natural gas for underwater deposits of frozen methane. Ooh, you know, frozen wow. gas. So called flammable ice, and, wow. and and this breakthrough really could be a boon to en- the energy poor nation like Japan, mm. right? Which imports all of its Everything. energy, and yeah. and it doesn't have to even depend on the Fukushima Daiichi type plants anymore, right? Wow. So so it's really kind of cool. They 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 spent hundreds of million dollars. You know, don't get me wrong, this wasn't easy, oh, um, yeah. but it looks like. They could get the flammable ice to market within the next few years, they say. So um, and it'll be a boon to uh, places that have similar things like that to Canada, uh, U.S., uh, countries like that. So mm. I'm really kind of excited about this. Norway mm. um, and even China um, in the northern part of there that, that has uh, – uh, these kind of methane hydrate deposits. So it kind of l- lies this this kind of like slush like um, uh, material lies below, below the seabed, um, especially in uh, the, the colder climates. And um, and there's about 1.1 trillion tons of this stuff that they can extract methane out of. So basically, they don't have to get they don't have to probably depend on nuclear. If they could bring this to commercialization, they don't have to depend on any nuclear uh, uh, plant at all at this point. So wow, that's it was fascinating really cool. technology, man. Yeah. Look forward to seeing yeah, that. So, yeah, so, you know, watch, 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 watch for that because I think even uh, the U.S. have tried – this article says they had tried this thing called hydraulic uh, fracking. Yeah. <laughs> fracking. Yeah. You know, it's a kind of like of shale rock and uh, – mm-hmm. but. It somewhat has some downside to the environment that a lot of environmentalists say. So mm-hmm. this this other methane uh, methane flammable ice is really kind of cool. A lot of people were talking about it this week, so I wanted to bring that up yeah. in our show. Today. Very cool. Look so. forward to looking into that further. Yeah, yeah. So go Japan. Anyway, let's go on to the next one. Samsung Android relationship analysis. Yeah, the, the new Samsung was introduced this week, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, this is very interesting about this uh you know, one of the reasons is uh, this whole thought piece or article, whatever uh, analysis, is a lot of what we have been uh, sort of alluding to for some time. Um, but I see large value in what's going to happen here. It was an early chess move that seems to be evolving here. Yeah. So Samsung rarely said the word Android while unveiling its new Android-based yes. Galaxy S4 flagship phone. Uh, yes. And according to ABI research analyst Apple Mac. Canon, uh, there's a really good reason for that. Samsung is trying to distance itself from Android as much as possible in preparation for, quote, the great OS escape, unquote, that will reduce its dependence on the platform over the next two years. Um, 
you know, I, I've said, you know, I've said this for a long time, and McCannon's thesis is that Samsung wants more control over its own destiny going forward and doesn't want to be solely tied down to another company's mobile OS. So its goal with the Galaxy S4 is to build as many of its own features as possible onto the device to begin weaning its customers away from Google services. The trick, however, is finding an acceptable alternative to Android, since Windows Phone uh, looks like a non-starter for Samsung. Um, this also goes to my one of my other theses is, um, is that uh, Microsoft should get away uh, from their own Windows Phone, <laughs> uh, but we'll talk about that later. Um, oh, so that's big. <laughs> yeah, uh, McCann, uh, Mark. Canon uh, thinks it will inevitably turn to its own Tizen as a go-to operating system. So no new conversation here and uh, n yeah. nothing new learned for uh, regular uh, nerd stalker listeners here because we've been saying this over and over again. Uh, it seems to be bubbling up now to the mainstream sort of tech uh, uh, mm -hmm. news and, mm -hmm. and general community. I think it's going to get more and more traction and you're going to see this thing bubbling up. Um, Samsung is not Microsoft, and they Samsung <laughs> is firing on all cylinders right now. They are the direct competitors to Apple. Google is, you know, kind of in a services department, yes, absolutely. But Samsung is probably the strongest hardware manufacturing company on the planet right now. Absolutely. So, so what? what the Give me give me your take on this. So what what makes this different than a Windows thing where you still have to get apps, you still have to buy apps, you have to get apps on your phone. I mean, th that infrastructure doesn't go away, right? Yeah. Or, or, I think the big difference is is that Microsoft is a not a hardware manufacturer, right? They're a software mm, manufacturer, and they're and true. they're not even a develop fully developed services um, company, you know, sort of development company quite yet. They're trying to. Uh, they're really trying to, but it's all early stages right now. And obviously, the big winner in services right now is Google. Um, but Google is not true. a truly true. hardware developed company. Um, so the best, it's a really weird sort of, everyone's sort of jockeying for position right now. But um, I think Samsung is in a very, very strong position um, yeah. in that they, they have the hardware part down you know, Pat, I mean, they manufactured uh, a lot of Absolutely. the iPhone guts, right? And um, right. and sold them their parts. And they've been doing this for some time. Uh, they've been running Android on there, so they've probably learned a lot to uh, sort of mm. whatever, mm. Uh, be influenced by, mm. if you want to say that. Um, and so uh, I don't think they're going to blow it as bad as, bad as uh, mm. Apple has in terms of the services department. And they've worked directly with Google. They are obviously super smart in terms of a company, and they iterate quite quickly. Uh, so, I, you know, as opposed to wow. now we can talk about Microsoft now. Microsoft, and we've said this before, Greg, we've talked about this, and I've said this before, is that I think Microsoft should actually get out of this phone business. I think they should get out of the tablet business. And they should stick to their, you know, their old stuff, what they do, you know, enterprise and, and that kind of thing in terms of, you know, software and probably service support or whatever. Uh, but they mm. should just be a services development company for any particular platform uh, and, and not be distracted by trying this Windows phone and tablet endeavor in terms of financial and mental, you know, capacity or any of that i think they should be laser focused on primarily i think right now android and the iphone uh operating systems and probably playing around with tizen as well mm, mm, interesting no I, i'd like to see how this all kind of uh pans out for them yeah uh but uh you know with the migo and the uh acquisition and the tizen uh, there could be some interesting technology that they have control over, like IP. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, you know, yeah. I would, I would not discourage developers to get out there and start dipping their toes in Tizen because you know this could be a viable uh, number three. Yeah, no, no, it sounds good. I mean, that's a great lead into my next story as well. So I think I'd like to talk a little bit about that next. So yes, sir. So where um, have all the gadgets gone? Well, you know, th th this is a great. No, you know, we, we we handle a lot of thought pieces here on Nerd Stalkers, so uh, yeah. uh, the Tech Week podcast. So, uh, thanks to Sheridan Tatsuno of the Silicon Valley Global and uh, Wade Roche of X Economy. Uh, so, so in this article, uh, 
remarkable shift is taking place right under our noses. The universe of electronic devices in our homes and offices has stopped expanding and had in fact began to shrunk. And we, we know this, right? It's just this yeah. piece kind of puts it into perspective, right? Uh, so at a time when our productivity continues to rise and our information, entertainment, um, learning options are exploding, you know, we're getting more stuff done with less hardware stuff, right? So uh, yeah. this... This article had a picture of, of this guy in 2005, which had all the gadgets behind him that he uses currently, hmm. right? And you're talking, we're talking CD player, <laughs> tape player, in, in fact, as well. And, and the, the, the issue is, is that when he took a picture of himself today, there was such a stark contrast. There were hardly any devices besides, you know, um, uh, you know, a laptop, external monitor, um, Let's talk about a mm -hmm. uh, TV, maybe, mm -hmm. um, but an LCD HD TV, right? Yeah. Um, so, so you know, in uh, seven years, th this landscape has shifted. Now, you know, what does that mean? So let's look at music. Uh, he had two CD players, as I said earlier, a tape deck, turntable. Oh, right. You know, can you imagine a turntable? Right. You know, a tuner and a pair right. of loudspeakers. Yeah. Right? And now an iPhone and a, maybe even a jam box might even work, right? Yeah, totally, uh, man. And plug plug it into my uh, surround sound, maybe my iPhone is surround sound, and I got my tunes, right? Right. I don't even need a CD player, right? Um, and and you have uh, you know uh, uh, downloadable services, right? Mm -hmm. So Netflix, streaming, Google TV, Apple TV, however you want to call mm -hmm. it, it's all on the net, right? Mm -hmm. Video, like I said earlier, DVR, VCR, the guy had in 2005. Maybe three DVD players because of the different formats. Yeah. Interesting <laughs> you know? trend. Yeah, right, right. So, yeah. so that was just an example. But the one thing that Sheridan brought up in his thought piece, or uh, when he was discussing this thought piece, was chips. And we were talking earlier about Samsung, right? Mm -hmm. And here's the interesting play that I just thought about when you were talking about this last piece, right? Samsung, the biggest hardware manufacturer in the world is also the biggest chip manufacturing world surpassing Intel, right? Right, right. So what if they could embed all these kind of neat features that are software into chips? Mm. Now, you get a couple things. You get something that's captive, right? You don't need to do too much. Yeah. And, and, and you, just, you can't pirate that stuff. Right. So that's kind of cool, right? Mm. So that's something he brought up in this piece that I thought, well... You know, maybe Samsung, yeah, after you talked about your piece there, mm -hmm. maybe they could pull this off because of their silicon business. Mm -hmm. So it's just something to think about. Check it out. Uh, we'll put the link up. But I, I think it's something that everyone should really start considering. Uh, you know, software is really eating the world. And why not put the software into firmware, which is on a chip? Yeah, true. Very know. interesting. It reminds yeah. me of the, the automobile piece that I talked about at the beginning here when you brought up the record player. Mm. Right? It was one of those things I'm yeah. like, this thing will never go away. And the iPad came along, right? Or the tape deck <laughs> exactly. or whatever, right? Yeah, but, the know. iPad kicked all our asses. But, yeah, you know, yeah. think about it. it. It's gone full circle. So think about it. Apple brought in basically the the markets, right? Mm -hmm. The app markets to bear, right? Mm -hmm. And Google kind of followed, right? Wow. Wouldn't it be kind of cool if Samsung could figure a way to destroy the app markets? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Well, you know, another thing from the, from the Atlantic piece, and sorry I'm pimping out this Atlantic piece so much, is that um, no, these, these type of transitions, they don't happen like, like, like a quick lightning strike. They, they right. happen through a series of failures, you know, even like the early Model Ts or whatever automobiles it regularly sure. exploded the prototypes, right? And then you had to be an expert in <laughs> yeah. order to even use a vehicle, and people were even scared of right. them. And the same thing sort of applies with all this new technology. They have to... I think we've witnessed and we are witnessing a lot of like really uh, sort of experimental version ones, version twos in, in our lifetime that, you know, I think um, when these things end of life or transition or wherever these technologies are right now, um, it's it's going to be, it's sort of like the frog in the pot where the water is slowly coming up to, well, you don't realize the change is happening and then, whoa, change is happening. <laughs> you know, mm, I'm a yeah, frog yeah, being yeah. boiled. Basically, that's my that's my point here, people. Let's talk about the smartphone market. Yeah. Uh, so in February 2013, the iPhone's up, BlackBerry slides. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so, I'm shocked. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of, you know, up upswing uh, on, on um, the Android uh, market. But anyways, here, uh, Boy Genius Report, thank you for over the past two months, Apple's mobile market share climbed from, you know, the d 
disappointing fourth quarter numbers that Apple put in uh, from uh, December's 23.3% share to 27.2% in February. This sharp bounce mm. seems to have stopped Android's strong market share gains, which extended from mm. May to January. Uh, between January and February, the Android operating system share stalled at 36.9%. One key factor here seems to be Asia, where the handset's share has suddenly jumped from 7.8% to 10.4% over the past two months. Um, wow. This is interesting because Apple's recently uh, Apple recently focused on strong marketing pushes in Southeast Asia. Uh, in India, the iPhone can now be purchased via attractive new monthly payment plans. Uh, could it be that Apple now has new momentum in Asia, perhaps at the expense of the HTC and LG uh, new phones that have uh, faded badly in their core markets. Mm -hmm. uh, the stat counter numbers mm -hmm. also reflect a worrisome Asian slump for Nokia's S40 software platform, which underpins the budget Asha phone range. Um, stat counter's data seems to reflect the Asha family fortunes in Asia. Market share peaked in September, coinciding with the new product ramp-ups, followed by slow but accelerating decline over the winter as the low-end competition heated up. Nokia's quarterly reports uh, that were published after the stat counter data came out seem to fit this trend. Is it possible that the S40 market share slump in January and February is now um, you know, augmenting Nokia's Asian feature phone, you know, auguring, uh, hurting Nokia's Asian feature phone softness uh, <laughs> during the first quarter of this year or adding to it, actually, you know, is the question here. So, you know, really interesting sort of moves and results as opposed to, uh, especially what's happening in the bottom and, and mid-market also, as well as the high market. Apple's pushing in. Yeah. And, right. and what an influence well, Asia now has. <clears throat> yeah, and I think in our speed round, I'll talk about India a little bit too and in the uh, – the cell phone market and see what they're doing actually with um, actually Indian brands. Oh, right? cool. So, cool. So that, that's pretty cool. That, yeah. The Blackberry is definitely the loser out of all this, doesn't it? Make yeah. Sense? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's weird. Yeah. We'll see because um, those, um, you know, uh, the, what they're saying here is the BlackBerry OS decline in Europe has excel accelerated, accelerated notably over the past two months, which fit the theory that previous generation BlackBerry devices facing steep sales uh, and erosion as the new Z10, Z10 debuts. So uh, what it's looking like is Z10 numbers are doing well, but what is the speed of their loss You know, of market share during oh, this in-between process of these yeah. phones being bought? Because the, the Z10 is brand spanking right. news, yet they've lost so much market share already. Uh, so what's the curve there? And it's not yeah, looking good. Yeah, stick a fork in them, man. Stick a fork we'll in see, them. We'll see. So, so. Human body is a password for secured access. Tell us more, Greg. Oh, man, I love this article. So <laughs> thanks to Ryan Rowe of PSFK for this. Um, so the article goes, the, the world may have a new ally in gun control and safety. I, so based out of Chandler, Arizona, the newly unveiled Bodycom by Microchip, my, Microchip's a uh, chip manufacturer just like Intel, uh, uses the human body to grant users access to things like firearms, uh, front doors, and even doggy doors. Oh, so, cool. so how does this work, right? So how does this work? So... It Bodycom creates a personal area network, so a short-range communication system that uses the body as a wire between two points. Mm -hmm. So imagine uh, between this kind of device, you have a gun, <laughs> and and it communicates through your body sure. by sending a, a frequency mm -hmm. into it to add, to gain access, mm -hmm. initial access, just like a, a, a large area network would, and then. It would then do communications after that. And I thought it was really kind of cool technology. Wow. So, uh, you know, check that out because you could use it on guns. You could use it on um, a host of normal things that you need your – you as a person could authenticate Authenticate, I mean, yeah. Right. Yeah. And and this is really – this is cool. I mean, you don't need a retina scan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, There's so you many go, ways to use this. That's crazy. Yeah, this is this is cool technology. Check it out. Called Bodycom from uh, Microchip out of Chandler, uh -huh. Arizona. Really cool stuff. Uh, it, just Google it and get some more information yeah, on it. But look into that. there's a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is this is uh, again technology that could be disruptive. So it's a little different from it. the James Bond gun, where you need like the fingerprint or you know the bio yeah, thing yeah, to yeah, shoot yeah, or exactly, whatever. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know. You know, let's let's just use use this this body com thing. So I yeah. thought it was kind of cool. So 
Hey, let's go to speed, speed round, round, my friend. Speed round, speed round. <laughs> nice, <man. laughs> I love that. Anyway, let's so talk. You, first, you're yeah. up first, my friend. So uh, yes. I'm talking about the Hydro Pack here. So um, Keith Lampy and Robert Slater started Hydration Technology Innovations, HTI for short. Uh, they partnered with uh, Eastman Chemical. Yep. And so let me tell you a little bit of background here. So waterborne illness is can be the leading cause of death in the aftermath of a oh. disaster, right? Or, or yes. in a lot of places where water is scarce or whatever, right? Uh, so what they did is they invented something called the hydro pack. Hydro packs are powered by seemingly magical filtration technology called forward osmosis. Uh, this foundational technology is only achieved through HTI's proprietary membrane that is based on a material manufactured by Eastman Chemical Company called cellulose mm. acetate. Uh, Eastman cellulose Whoa. acetates are, uh, are esters, are versatile bio-based, we're going to get super nerdy here, bio-based polymers with desirable properties to make membranes, and they inherently like water. The cellul okay. cellulistic technology is the heart of the membrane, says uh, Joie du Wheat. Uh, this is actually allowing Mother Nature's forces to work for you. Uh, HTI is, is able to configure this material in different forms to make a very thin, flat sheet membrane that allows a rejection layer to be added to it. In simple terms, Terms, this allows the water to go through the membrane while blocking out contaminants, the bad stuff. Oh, the hydro neat. pack is comprised of a membrane pouch containing an osmotic draw agent in the form of a sports drink powder. Uh, when the pouch is placed in dirty water, water diffuses across the membrane to mix with the powder. Nice. Uh, the membrane allows nice. water to pass while rejecting even the harshest of contaminants. The resulting clean drink provides a much needed calories and electrolytes uh, what starts as a four by six inch pouch uh, transforms over eight to 12 hours into clean healthy nutritional 12 inch pouch uh, drink straw included uh, awesome technology uh, basically you can think of Crazy. those little like drinks that you get at the store for kids you know those little whatever uh, drinks yeah. you know you poke the bag with a straw yeah. and drink out of it this you know you put yeah. in the thing yeah cleans Cap the water the capri and, suns yeah capri suns and the, you know someone in a gnarly event can drink you know out of a ditch or something like that and the, right, the, right. the huge plus for this and a little known fact is that um you know, this is a lot of weight for these rescue helicopters to have to carry, typically water bottles or whatever. These things are one fifteenth the weight of the water of that thing. So they're saving a ton mm. of money on uh, fuel for these helicopters when they can add other type of emergency, uh, you know, a response type of uh, nice. things for, for this type of thing. But uh, fascinating uh, technology. Check them out. Uh, the URL is readysetdrop.com. I believe they're looking to raise some more money too. So check them out. Readysetdrop.com. Nice. Nice. I, speed I round. Love, love technology. <laughs> speed round. Speed round. Okay. My next one up, uh, we were talking about uh, the Asian smartphones. So Indian smartphone vendors could crush Nokia in emerging markets. So thanks to uh, our Twitter and, and, uh, a nerd stalker uh, liberty madison for this hey, um, liberty. Uh, using right. our using our hashtag and uh nrdsdk and, and this is through also boy genius reports vgr uh, the first wave of um, asian smartphone vendors launched uh, lg and samsung um which is models uh I won't even go into the yeah, model names, yeah. but basically the latter, which ended in 2005, mm -hmm. and as the number one vendor in the world. And, and the second wave began also with the emergence of Chinese powerhouses, uh, Huawei and ZTE, mm -hmm. right? Well, next, uh, between July and December of 2012, a trio of Indian smartphone mark, uh, companies have, have kind of slowly captured some market share. Wow. Uh, have you heard of... Carbon, hmm. Micromax, and Lava. Uh, so they increased their market shares Good from four percent to twelve. Wow! And I think this is. Uh, we were talking about this earlier. You know, I think uh, Nokia not only is probably going to get eaten alive by uh, uh, the iPhone uh, adoption, hmm. it's going to be eaten alive from the bottom, the bottom. by some of wow. these. Yeah, from these uh, these Indian manufacturers. Wow. I mean, we're talking. We're talking like, uh, you know. Uh, they call that a 9, squeeze play. Rupees. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 170 bucks. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. you know, just to start off with, and then you know, and 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 services in India, from what my friends tell me, are almost given away. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. know the and and which is a lot different in this country. We pay for every <laughs> bit that we get we consume oh, here. Yeah. You know, they almost give it away. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. Check out that article. I think uh, it was great. And thanks, Liberty, for that uh, tweet on uh, NRDSTK for us. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, Liberty.
Ooh, all right, so mine is uh, Zio is going out of business. Oh, so um, Zio is really huge with uh, quantitative self type people. What it basically do is, does is track your sleeping kind of thing. But let me let me talk more about this. Oh, so, nice. Since late last year, it has been something yeah. of an open secret in some digital health circles that uh, Newton, Massachusetts based sleeping sleep monitoring and coaching company Zio was winding down its operations and searching for a buyer. At least one investor was making oh. veiled references to the company running out of money during various Q and A periods at the M Health Summit in Washington D.C. last year. Zio's original offering was a sleep monitor that included a wireless-enabled sensor-equipped headband that users wore at night and uh, a bedside display alarm clock type thing uh, that captured the data transmitted from the headband. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, uh, you didn't even need that alarm clock thing. There also was an iPhone version of this also um, that there still is that people can purchase, whatever. Uh, it it mm -hmm. caught a lot of traction. A lot of these, like I said, quant self type people are really into this thing. It's a big deal at the quant self conferences. Uh, everyone... Yeah, so I think it was a little bit ahead of its time, so it's unfortunate. They're looking for a buyer right now. I think they're even mm. selling their, their IP right now. Uh, so it's it's a, sh oh, it's a shame. Hopefully well, there'll be someone to, to take its place. Well, definitely it'll help in the biohacking realm, right, some of this technology, right, to see exactly how well, it did. Certain, I mean, that's what's so that unfortunate is, like, uh, all these people yeah. use it so much and relied on it, so it was a, it was a big blow to that, that community. Oh, man, bummer. Bummer. Okay, speed round. Speed round. So uh, mine is Astrid integrates Siri for voice-powered reminders. So this thanks to uh, CNET Rick Broida uh, for this. Uh, you know, iOS uh, recently and the le latest kind of Astrid. And if you don't know Astrid, Astrid is a, is a task manager. I use it a lot on my Android. It's a great app. And a lot of people use it. it, it you started to actually use um, your voice to actually add to the app itself any tasks that you need. So you could just talk, you know, hey, I need some, I need some eggs at the market. You know, my wife just called me or something like that. Mm. And but now, uh, what, what's really cool is that the, uh, you could use Siri to remind you, you know, by voice. So you're driving cool. along, let's say in your car, you have it all hooked up you know, Bluetooth in hand, and it says, oh, by the way, you need to do this today, you know, mm -hmm. and it says, oh, yeah, I need to do this. And, you know, uh -huh. it, um, and I think for people who are driving, it's really good. I, yeah. I, I like listening to things while I'm driving, oh, totally, so man. it might not be a good, you know, I don't know how it plays in other places where you're all on the train or not, you know, and, and other places where you're commuting, but, you know, this seems kind of kind of a cool iOS app, so, I, you know, check it out. Um, uh, yeah. CNET had a great write-up. We have a link for that, but, but yeah, try out Astro too if you yeah. want a good task manager. I've heard very good things. Yeah. So. so tip time, tip time, oh. buddy. Tip time, tip time, tip time. Let's do it, man. All right. So my tip of the week is called uh, Hater. <laughs> so a uh, Hater is an oh, app. Oh yeah, I saw it. <laughs> so I Hater, that share thing, the things you hate with the great people tweet. you love. Is their uh, is their tagline? <laughs> I love this. So you can live stream uh, feeds of hates from people you follow. You could take a photo with a Hater camera, <laughs> add a filter, and then write a comment and this share what you hate. You can write a hate rant and share it uh, with the people you follow who follow you. Explore the most popular hates. Share hates anonymously under an alter ego. Instantly, sh instantly share your your hates on Facebook and Twitter. Interact with friends by exchanging comments and hates, push notifications, geotag and hashtag where and what you hate, and much, much more. And it's free. So go get it, people. Go to the iOS store. I believe it's iOS only right now, although I'm not positive. So go go take a look. Uh, it's Hater uh, app. And the URL for that is hater-app.com. That's hater-app.com. All right, your tip, Greg. Oh man, you know you know how I have an Android, right? And you're you're an iOS guy now now and, and, and Androids suck batteries. Like I have this darn thing plugged in almost all the time to my mm. laptop while I'm at work, right? So so anyway, uh thanks to um all things digital, uh Bonnie Cha for this. Uh improving smartphone battery life with apps. And there's a couple apps that she mentioned in here which are really cool for your Android. We got uh Juice Defender mm -hmm. uh by Late Droid and uh two X battery uh by Sam Liu. And, and and just think about it, you could manage a lot of these things manually, but a lot of these apps these days for power management do it automatically. Mm -hmm. So like when your screen dies, it turns off the Wi-Fi, for example, mm -hmm. or turns off your GPS, for example, when the screen dies. And then when once you wipe across it again, it turns it all back on. So, so a lot of the things that you used to have to do by just going to your settings – 
now are actually a little more automated and 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 power management apps i think are the way to go mm. and you don't have to think about it it just it'll manage it and, and it has different modes you know aggressive extreme uh those type of modes uh to try to manage a lot of your battery power so check that out I, you'll see our link with that and it's the two apps that were were mentioned in this article which is juice defender and 2x battery for your android cool. so Check it out, guys. That's Check great. it out. That's man. great. So, Greg, events coming up. What do we got going on? Well, on uh, Wednesday, the 20th, we got uh, SF New Tech. Uh, it's, it's getting hot in here, mm-hmm. so is the show. Nice. And uh, we'll be live uh, streaming uh, from 7 o'clock at uh, Mighty, 119 Utah Street in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And we got uh, some pretty good uh, – People coming up. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to write an article uh, on Nerd Soccer, so catch it probably in the next 24 hours Excellent. on who's going to be presenting there. But we have some some pretty interesting apps there, and uh, I think uh, it'd be worth at least looking at a Ustream if you can make it there live. So Very cool, man. Look forward to that, that? SF News Tech. So, people, remember, if you want to contribute to the show, you use the hashtag NRDSDK, uh, or better yet, just go to iTunes and subscribe to our audio or video podcast. You can also go to our YouTube channel, Nerdstalker TV. Do a search for Nerdstalker TV. Uh, you could always go to nerdstalker.com. We have a wealth of uh, stuff there. Go to Podomatic, look up Nerdstalker, Stitcher, look up Nerdstalker. I could go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so anyway. And uh, yeah, and, and we our YouTube channel is chock full of stuff yeah. of our videos and interviews. Oh, and so, I broadcast TV. Um, I always forget about that. Our twenty four by seven, right? Yes, twenty four by seven. I broadcast TV, but we're syndicated all over the place. That's right. It's it's ridiculous these days. So, <laughs> yeah. and catch our social time uh, TV show with uh, Sean Charles from uh, Yes Sir. Uh, Lovely Vancouver Island, British Columbia, as he always tells me, and uh, myself as we talk about uh, social news. And uh, we'll be probably this next one, we'll be talking about uh, social recruitment and uh, using social media to find jobs. So cool. that's a big topic these days. So, okay. anyway, uh, how do they get a hold of you, my friend yes. Adolfo Ferranda? So, you can, uh, you know, there's a couple ways you can find us, both of us, our posts at, at Nerdstalker on Twitter, but me, you can find me at, at A Ferranda, that's A F O R O N D A on Twitter. Uh, feel free to email me uh, about Nerdstalker, Adolfo at Nerdstalker.com. And, uh, Greg, how about you? Hey, well, you catch me at socialgreg at nerdstalker.com on email, and I'll always answer those if you uh, just uh, ping me on that. But a lot of easier way is that you could also uh, follow me and uh, on at socialgreg on Twitter. So uh, either way works for me, and I'll be happy to reply to you. So anyway, great show today. I uh, appreciate it. a lot of the connections were really kind of inter- intertwined. So it's yeah. great, great topic, great show. We man. call that synergy, appreciate it. baby, synergy. Synergy, baby. Synergy. Okay, well, anyway. That's Greg's motto. All right, people. Well, thank you so much for uh, listening and watching out there, all right? Yeah, and be careful out there. Promise. All right, see you guys.